Hi, my name is Eugene Yokoda. I'm a software engineer from Twitter. My pronouns are he, him. My visual description is an Asian person wearing a dark t-shirt with a bookshelf in the background. Today, I like to talk about third-party dependency resolution in JVM and the solution that we're developing in Twitter called Bazel Multiversion. So a little bit about the context. Uh, I joined Build Team at Twitter last year. So I'm relatively a newbie in Bazel. Uh, however, I've been maintaining this build tool called SVT that's popular in Scala uh, ecosystem. So in a way, I can say that I'm more like familiar with messing with the jar files from the Maven Central uh, in the binary ecosystem, especially in the Scala. So I like to start with this one question. Is mono repo a mono version? And if so, are we all connected? Well, it's certainly not the case uh, with Twitter. So we have around like 1,000 plus uh, incidental multiverses. And here we define multiverse to be a unique combination of external dependency versions. And similar to traditional build tools uh, like Maven or SVT, Pants resolves these external dependencies at the top level targets, like test and Scala binary targets. So essentially, individual targets could form its multiversion. So stepping back a little bit, let's look at what monoversioning and multiversioning are. Monoversioning is basically you have one version of Kafka or Mokito or Guava in the mono repo, whereas multiversioning, you have multiple versions of Kafka, Mokito, or Guava. And I think many people associate mono versioning as almost like a characteristic of the mono repo, but we actually think it's more of a two-dimensional design space. On one axis, we have mono versioning versus multi-versioning. And on the other hand, there is a unified versus the ad hoc dependency resolution. So conventional rules such as rules JVM external and basal depths are on the top left quadrant. Um, these are fast, correct, but in a way inflexible because of the mono versioning. So whenever you adopt one library, everyone basically needs to be compatible with that particular adoption. Pants as a build tool that we have been using at Twitter for the mono repo build um, is sort of on the bottom right quadrant where it is ad hoc resolution, but supports multi-versioning. Um, so in a way, it's a little slower and it could be inconsistent within the mono repo, but it gives us the flexibility to do incremental adoption of some specific uh, dependency. So in a way, we can think of it as the, uh, like the, these are the two competing sort of like a way of thinking. But the, uh, we can't really do ad hoc resolution like just by the design of Bazel, right? It's because that will be incorrect, meaning that the, uh, the result would end up picking up things that is not part of the input. So another thing is that even if we somehow could force it, that would end up squandering the benefits of the adopting Bazel which is its ability to catch things uh, more correctly. So as a combination, we're working on Bazel multiversion, which basically takes the unified resolution of Bazel, but implements the uh, flexible incremental adoption of the multiversioning. So this is more sort of like uh, looking at it as like the, why are the benefits or the you know, I don't even want to say benefits because it's not one that's clearly superior, but why, you know, companies like Twitter may use multi-versioning. So for the more like a business use case. And this is like a curve, uh, sometimes called a crossing the chasm curve or the uh, innovation dissemination curve. The, so one, one side left is the early adopters. So there could be cloud service SDKs 
what wants to use, let's say, like a Google Cloud, and these could be moving much faster. Um, and then there could be newer versions of databases like Kafka. Um, they may be moving faster. And, but the huge chunk will be the paved path. And that will be where the majority of the monorepo users would use. And on more stable side, there could be batch jobs, uh, like map reduce jobs that needs to be stable because it's running inside of our data infrastructure. And on more of the, uh, the legacy side, uh, there could be persisted data structure that needs to be retrieved back in the exact form. And that could be persisted into database or some sort of like a protocol. So these are some of the phases that uh, innovation adoption may go through. And by using multi-version, the teams that are innovating faster can basically go ahead of the pack and adopt. And on the other hand, the team that needs to be super stable can keep sort of like behind the pack uh, when, then, when even the majority of the, uh, the companies have moved on. So Bazel multi-version is available on GitHub under Apache v2 license. This is the uh, open source program that we created. Um, to sort of like uh, give credit, the, the original author is Olaf, and he came up with the, a lot of the concepts behind this stuff. And uh, we work on with, with a team. So it's not just like me presenting, but a bunch of people have worked on this. The input we use build file, but sort of like a build-ish file, because this is not an actual Bazel file, is the same sort of like a formatting that's used in packs. And here, like, there could be multiple inputs. And this is an example of the Starlock binding that I created that looks exactly like the pants file. So we define a build that says jar library, and in there, we can define the version of the Guava we want. And so we could have Guava 29 and Guava 24 and different versions of the Guava in here. And when you run multi-version, this basically, so it says multi-version import build, and that will import these build files it will generate like traditional, so like a ruled Scala rules. So first it will create the HTTP file and that includes the URL and the SHA-256 of these jar files. And then it will create the Scala import by representing the dependency graph of these uh, external dependencies. To use these uh, third-party uh, dependencies, you basically refer to it as like app maven slash slash colon third-party and then say guava guava, and that will pick up the all of the guava and its uh, you know transitive dependencies of this the target. And so here's how sort of like the rough draft of how the resolution works. Um, so there are two kinds of dependencies. The one in the solid lines are the direct dependencies, whereas the ones in the dotted lines are the transitive dependencies that we pick up as a dependency of the dependency. So the initial resolution is done using Corsia, and that essentially forms a mini graph of all of the direct dependencies that's in the buildish file. And here we see an example where Kafka 2.6 and Kafka 2.5 are picked up. And that is actually an example uh, dependency conflict where you have the same module, but two different versions. So to resolve these conflict, we perform a secondary resolution where we bucket uh, these all the transitive dependencies into basically buckets per module. And by default, we assume the uh, early sandbar, which is a variant of the semantic versioning. So all of the 2x goes into a single bucket. So 251 gets evicted uh, in favor of 260. But because we're assuming the semantic versioning, if it's 26 and then let's say it's Kafka 300, uh, the, these will be bucketed differently and we'll basically now have a multi-version situation. 
So to tweak the uh, the resolution, we have a whole bunch of different knobs. So we'll look at like some of the main techniques we use to tweak the resolution. The first is sort of like a pinning uh, minor version. And you can think of it more like a closer to the techniques probably use in the mono versioning world where we want to tightly control the particular version. And let's say we don't want the eviction to be happening and we, we do want to use Kafka 2.5. And you basically promote the transitive dependency of Kafka 2.5 uh, 2.6 into 2.5 in this case. So the direct dependency is by default given force equals true. So that will be pinned to that. So in this case, the, the pub sub light Kafka would pick up Kafka 2.5 as its transitive dependency. So if you've used Kafka before, uh, especially Kafka streams, you might be thinking, oh, I don't really want these evictions to happen. And we consider Kafka 2.4, 2.5, 2.6 to be a uh, different uh, libraries that we want to track. In this case, we could increase the granularity of bucket by setting it to PVP. So PVP is a term used by Corsia as well as SBT to mean that the first two segments of the version, like 2.1, is a major version. And this comes from Haskell's package versioning policy. So by calling it PVP, we can increase the granularity. Yeah, so in this case, back to Kafka 2.6 and 2.5, these will be tracked separately. The other way is to sort of like uh, decrease that granularity, and you can say always. In this case, everything gets bucketed into the same single bucket, so we can treat them like in the same way. Well, actually, we don't really want to use that because that's sort of like a, more of a big claim that the any of the versions are sort of like interchangeable. So to take a little more conservative approach, we could do this thing called unification. And that's basically we would exclude a specific one from a particular target. In this case, like the uh, pub sub light, we can exclude 2.6 and then manually point to Kafka 3.0. So in this only particular case, we will perform this like a unification process. And I sometimes call this graph stretching because um, we're stretching the graph sideways. And in the build file, it looks like this. Like, uh, so we add the exclus for the Kafka clients, and then we add the dependency pointing to the one that we track. So here are the summary of the tweaks. Uh, you know, we can pin things, we can increase or decrease the granularity, and a lot of times we do unification to resolve the major version conflicts. So next, uh, we want to look into resolving the diamond problem. So what is a diamond problem? Is that, so in the earlier example, we said there could be like, you know, Kafka 2.6 and Kafka 3.0, right? So what if you have a target that consumes both of these two things? So by default, Bazel doesn't know the, uh, the context of these jar files because in Bazel, the dependency graph is unified with the task graph. So what ends up happening is uh, on the class path, you will end up with both you know, Kafka 2 and Kafka 3, which is not great. So one of the ways we tackle this problem is that uh, we multiversion provides a linter. And you can say multiversion lint your target name. And this will point out saying, hey, your target contains like multiple versions of GAX and multiple versions of Guava. And here we have like a Guava 2.5, 2.6, and 30 uh, on the class path. So we run this multi uh, like nightly job for all of the targets, top level targets, to detect if there are any of these like a uh, conflict that's happening in our mono repo. And then, to fix it, we can use this like a unification process again. 
to basically stretch saying, oh, instead of having like Guava 2.6 and 2.7, uh, we'll just unify it towards Guava 2.7. The other more sort of like an interesting uh, technique we provide here is the library cross-building. So let's say we want to wrap Kafka using Kafka Utility or Kafka Util. And given the same source code, we can provide a cross-building facility so that the Kafka Util can be Kafka Util for 2.6 as well as 3.0. And we can do that by writing this thing called cross Scala library in the buildish file. And it will be looking at the same set of the source code, but we can pass this like a Kafka cross, which is a list of two dictionaries, in this case, like Kafka with the blank and Kafka with two six. And these will essentially get substituted under dash Kafka as either blank or dash two six and expand into two targets, just like this. So one will be Kafka util with nothing, and the other will be Kafka util underscore Kafka underscore 2.6. And they will be looking at two different uh, dependencies. So this is one way we can provide like a cross-building support um, to basically you know, support both Kafka, different versions of Kafka's inside of the monorepo. Um, in case that the, uh, that is not enough, um, there is sort of like a last ditch hack that we also implement. So we really don't want to have a situation where there are multiple Kafka's showing up inside of the class path. So in case that the, uh, there are multiple conflicts, there is a tertiary resolution that we implemented inside of the rule of Scala. So this is a custom phase that we injected into rule of Scala. So when we, whenever you do compilation or testing, the, uh, we will deduplicate any conflicts. So the, the compiler would only see one of them. Uh, typically, we don't really want to resort into this because there could be essentially uh, inconsistencies between what the compiler would see and what the Bazel query is going to return. So to wrap it up, um, Twitter Bazel multiversion is the open source solution that we're exploring to provide multiversioning support on top of Bazel. And it's a unified multiversioning to get both the speed as well as the flexibility. The initial resolution happens using Corsia. The secondary does the bucketing. And tertiary is a resolution that happens at the target level. And to resolve the diamond problem, there are multiple tools that we offer, including linting as well as cross-building and, like I said, the tertiary resolution. Lastly, I'd like to give shouts outs to uh, the several people who worked on this project. Uh, Olaf, like I said, he came up with the initial design as well as the implementation. Matan, I work with together closely. He implemented all the complicated exclusion rules as well as the rules around inter third party dependencies. And Angela implemented machine readable logging as well as a nightly linting process. Thank you.